Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're ready for another video from our youth group at Lighthouse Baptist Church. If this is your first time watching a video or you're trying to catch up on a missed lesson, we hope that this video is a blessing to you and helps you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. to talk uh, about different, well, main topic is we're going to talk about stewardship. And I think, does anybody know what it means to be a steward or what stewardship is? All right, Gage. Caretaker. A caretaker, a manager, something like that. Gage, obviously you have a manager where you work and Alana and Dax and so forth. Um, but we know the Bible talks about being good stewards. Ladies, we good? All right. So uh, we're going to talk about several things we want to be a good steward of. And tonight, obviously, you see in our title slide here, we're going to talk about being a good steward of your money. One of the most important uh, things that we, we can be a good steward of. Before we get into it, okay, you guys, at no doubt, at some point in the future, especially if you go to a, a Christian college or anything like that, or if somebody at your workplace has questions or just in general, if you have spiritual conversations with them, they might bring up the topic of the church and money. Okay. Usually, usually in a secular aspect, it's going to be brought up like, well, the church just wants my money. That's all the church cares about. All right. And I think most of you guys might be able to answer that in a certain way or, or what it may be. Uh, but hopefully tonight's lesson and, and other lessons like it help you understand why you can tell them, well, why is it that people give to the church in general? Okay. They might have a, a, an idea that is somewhat shaded by like the Catholic church or, or, or televangelists and so forth like that. You know, these giant churches where they're passing buckets around and stuff for their offering plates or whatnot. But in a, in a more Christian realm, say if you're with other believers and so forth, you might get someone that might have arguments or just bring up the questions of, well, should the church even be required to tithe? Or is, it, is tithing even, even something that uh, the church should do? And the argument might be something like, well, you see, the tithe is actually an Old Testament law. And technically, they are, are correct. All right? It was a, an Old Testament law to the Jews and usually had to do with their livestock and certain other things as well to help um, the, you know, support the Levites and the temple and the priests because they did not make any money in that, in, like most other uh, tribes at that time did. So you'll have somebody that'll bring up, well, we, should, we don't have to tithe because that's an Old Testament law. It doesn't apply to us in a New Testament church. Okay, you guys follow that? But what we're going to see here today is that ignores everything we see in the New Testament that talks about giving unto the Lord. Okay? There's no law. It doesn't mean, oh, just because the tithe was a new, an Old Testament thing, then you're, not, you're, you're in no way obligated or have to give unto the Lord. No, giving is still very much a principle that is alive and well, even in the New Testament. Um, and I think sometimes it's a disservice because uh, people still use the phrase, like we do here at the church, use the phrase tithe and offering, and, and that is what triggers some people when they hear the word tithe. But in general, what we follow is that as believers, we understand it's, it's our responsibility to give unto the church, to give unto the ministry, and to have a heart of a giver as well. That's actually a gift. Remember, we talked about that in Spiritual Gifts. So anyway, we're going to read the first four verses. And what we're going to see here is Paul is going to reference uh, a gathering of money for a specific need, specifically for the church in Jerusalem. He's going to talk about the saints. And we're going to talk about some reasons for that. But anyway, in verse 1, it says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, so he's talking about a collection of resources and money for the saints back at Jerusalem, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. And this is Galatians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, Upon the first day of the week, and this is the main verse we're going to look at, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, and there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality, which is your generosity, unto Jerusalem. So what you've collected, whoever you appoint to bring that, I, I, I will possibly go with them. And if it be me that I go also, they shall go with me. All right, so he's saying, hey, referring to the collections that I've talked about with the Church of Galatia, I'm hoping you guys are collecting as well to give unto the saints in need, uh, most likely the saints back in Jerusalem. 
And he says, those who have pointed to collect that and carry that, if, it, if I can, I will go with them as well if I go all the way back to Jerusalem. All right, so we, we understand what's going on here. Okay, so number one, we're going to talk about giving is an act of worship. Okay, giving is an act of worship. Uh, what day of the week uh, is Paul uh, asking them to collect? Sunday. He said the first day of the week. Sunday is also, we, we, we know that as the Lord's Day. Let me just give you your two points here. So the giving was on the Lord's Day, and you're giving as the Lord has blessed you. He, he uses the phrase there, uh, as God hath prospered him. Okay, ultimately we understand that all that we have is of God. Okay, that includes your ability to work, the job you may have, and then the, the compensation you get from working that job. Each member was to come to the Lord's Day gathering, all right, whatever that may have been in Corinth, prepared to give his share for that week to the collection for, not just, he's referring specifically to this collection for the saints, but obviously the church needed to operate as well, and there was also just other needs that were about. Uh, does, does anybody recall when the church first began, what was one of the great needs that the, the church helped take care of? In, in the church community or in the community at large. Micah. Widow, yeah, the fathers and the, the widows. Okay, that was something that uh, the church definitely made sure to take care of. Uh, obviously, the collection is obviously going to help with that. All right, so quick points here, but I'll give you guys some time to, to write down. Giving is an act of worship. As the Lord has blessed you, you should give back unto the Lord. All right, so it's a, it's a sign of faith. It's also a sign of gratitude as well. All right, moving on. Point number two, giving should be systematic. All right, systematic just meaning something done in intervals, some sort of consistency in a way, whether it be every two weeks, every month, whatever it may be. And we get this from verse two where he says, upon the first day of the week. And he's not just talking about just one time. All right, he's talking about every week. Okay, now this isn't a direct correlation with how we operate in the world today. All right, do people usually, you work in, you know, guys and gals now, do people usually get paid every week? All right, some, some jobs do. Some jobs do get paid every week. Uh, most jobs, it's every other week. Some, it's just two times a month. So, you know, like a month like this month, it's a little messed up. Um, but regardless, what we see here, let me just get your points down here. It shows a consistency. Believers set aside their offering at home and then brought it to the assembly on the first day of every week. However, this, this isn't a mandate, all right, but it does show consistency, okay? And what I mean by it isn't a mandate, obviously, it's something that probably isn't observed that we can't possibly observe in our lives today. When we just talked about when people get paid and so forth, some people decide, you know what, I'm just going to pay once a month, okay? Or I'm just going to give unto the Lord uh, once every, whatever the time span may be. You can have a consistent interval or whatever, but the idea is that it's a consistent thing, okay? It's not just something that is done occasionally or just when it's convenient unto you, okay? Because obviously that's not showing a gratitude unto the Lord if you only ever so often feel like giving back unto the ministry of the Lord. You guys follow? It's like, ah, all right, Easter, I'll give it to the Lord. Christmas, I'll, I'll give unto the Lord, okay? What I'm trying to get across here, guys, is number one, not to hold steadfast to what you guys might have grown up and might have been thinking of is tithing all the time 10%. Because what we're actually going to find out is in the New Testament, there's not really a percentage that's given. Okay? It's as the Lord has prospered you. And we'll, we'll get that into that a little bit. And what I mean by systematically is not that like with your Bible reading, like, oh, I got to make sure I do it every day or, or every week. But you, you want to be consistent in, in a way in how you're giving. Why? Because you're, you have a heart that is grateful unto the Lord, that wants to give and help others, that wants to bless the ministry and so forth. Otherwise, your heart isn't, let me put it this way. Otherwise, it shows that, you know, you're not really thinking of the ministry or you're not that grateful or you don't really think about helping people as much unless it's like Thanksgiving or something like that. All right, it shows consistency, it shows where your heart's at. And this type of giving would prevent a lack of funds when there was a need. All right, so if a need was to arise, they would be able to 
pay for that or meet that need because people have been consistently giving. So let's take, what I mentioned Thanksgiving. Usually that's the time of year when people feel the most gracious, right? Because it's Thanksgiving. That's the time of year when food shelters usually don't need any volunteers because everyone's volunteering at that time. But if the whole church was just like, you know what, we're just going to give at Thanksgiving, all right, and say around June, you know, someone in the church has a great need or we want to help out with a certain ministry, but nobody's been giving since Thanksgiving, there might be a lack of funds there. All right, that's also another reason why consistency is a good thing. Um, I want you guys to turn over and keep your thumb or finger or pen or whatever in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. All right, we're going to go back from our chapter, our text to 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 to look at a lot of these things uh, about giving. All right, so 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and I want to read verse 10, 13, and 14. Okay, chapter 10, not chapter 10, chapter 8, verse 10, 13, and 14. All right, the Bible says, and herein... I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year. So they've been collecting for whatever cause, or they've been collecting for a year in advance. Okay? Verse 13. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burden, but an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want that there may be equality. And, that, and what he's not talking about is equality in that everyone's giving the same amount. But he's saying because you have been giving, like for this past year, you know, and maybe sometimes you were able to give more because God has blessed you with more. And sometimes you had to give a little less than you usually do because, hey, you're just going through some thin times. But because you've been consistent, say when someone is going through a rough patch and needs help, you are able to help them out of your abundance because you've been giving. The church has been receiving that collection. They're able to help. And then vice versa. Say when you're starting to go through a thin time, you're able to receive help because that other person who just went through their valley experience has been blessed of the Lord. And through their abundance, they've been giving as well. You guys follow that? I know I'm saying a lot there. It's just saying through people giving consistently, as the Lord has prospered them, whether greatly or small, all right, that's going to help people when these times of need do come up so that out of your abundance and that's what it means just because it's not saying oh when you're rich that's when you got to give all all, unto everybody else it's just saying out of your abundance because god has blessed you and you're giving back you're able to help someone who is going through a poverty time or a a a thin time so to speak okay that's why consistency is good you guys follow all right numero uno dos tres all right giving is to be personal okay it's everybody can be involved. In verse 2 of our text, it says, every one of you. All right, let me give you your points here really quick if you want to write it down. Paul expected each member to share in the offering, rich and poor alike, as the Lord has prospered you. Okay, so that includes the very abundant times. That includes the times of minimum uh, wealth as well. Generous giving is a personal response to receiving God's grace in and through Christ Jesus. If you go back to uh, chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians, or if you're still there. All right, I forgot to keep my thumb there. Shame on me. All right, verse 9 gives us our example for giving, okay? When the times are good, that's definitely a good time to give, because it says here, For ye know that the great, ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, talking about as God, obviously he is, he is rich, he is all-powerful, yet for your sakes he became poor. How did Christ become poor? Ladies, if Christ was rich, what was it that, for your sakes, he became poor? How did that happen? What? Yeah, he came to earth. He humbled himself. He became a man. The king of kings became the lowliest of men, the son of a carpenter, born in a, born in a manger or stable. Uh, he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. He became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. Okay? He gave of himself to help enable you to be made alive, okay? Christ is our example, and God's grace towards us, what he did for us, ought to be a motivation for our giving, not to hold it unto ourselves and not to heap unto ourselves our own uh, material wealth, all right? Christ humbled himself, gave of himself for others. We should be able to give of ourselves for the ministry and for others as well, okay? Numero cuatro, giving must be planned, all right? Once again, I'm not saying that 
you have to plan for like the year in advance. I'm only going to give this much every time. But there has to be thought and intention in your giving. All right. It's not something that's solely impulsive or sporadic. What do I mean, gentlemen, by impulsive or sporadic? Okay. I think you know what uh, sporadic is, just ever so often, Thanksgiving, whatever. But what do I mean by impulsive? Ethan. Maybe you see someone else in the church giving or um, something reminds you, like, oh, I need to. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good example. Peer pressure. Well, everyone else is giving. I need it. No, you need to be wise as well. All right. Uh, it's like, like an impulse, like life's going your way, and like thank Jesus, so you give him more money that time than other times. Not, not completely, because we are going to talk about in proportion and so forth as God has prospered you. But more so, uh, I haven't necessarily seen this happen here, but I've seen it in other churches. You know, someone, a special speaker comes in, riles everyone, and there's like this high of emotions to give unto like a church project or something like that. And in fact, I was part of a church years ago in which they wanted to do this building project, and this speaker came in, and he riled everyone up, and like, come on, who can, who can pledge to give this much and this much until like the thousands of dollars and you, you rile up everybody enough and everybody's like, I'll do it. The, the, building, the, the building never happened. And that church actually doesn't even exist today. All right. So there's a couple of uh, bad avenues that could go down. Impulsive giving is one, the giving doesn't happen. You lie. Ananias, Sapphira, and so forth. Or two, you unwisely give too much. All right. It has to be, there has to be thought and intention in your giving. And we see in our text verse, as the Lord has prospered you. All right. Does God prosper some people more than others? I'm not saying that God cares more about other people than others. That's not what I'm saying. But we understand that some people are more prosperous than others. Okay? Be wise in your giving. You don't want to, you want, you don't want to be impulsive. You don't want to be hasty. And here, and this sounds bad, but this is also how I've seen churches get into a bad spot. All right? It's because people will make the argument of, well, you should just have faith. You should just have faith that the Lord can supply that need. Yes, I understand God can supply every need, but we're talking right now about being a good steward, managing your fund. That means, one, not hoarding what God has given you for just yourself. That's not managing it well. But it also means, two, not being unwise in how you give of yourself, or give of your resources. And yes, guys, that could also mean giving unto a perceived good cause, like a ministry or so forth. No, God wants you to be smart. All right, you can still give as he has blessed you, all right, but don't do, hey, if I'm going to feed my children, I'm going to give away all their lunch money instead, all right? <laughs> Somebody will come back with George Mueller and all these things. Yes, I understand that, but that is between you and the Lord, and if you can do that in a clear conscience before the Lord, then praise be to God. But a lot of times it's a high emotional, oh, I just have faith kind of mentality, and I've seen churches that have disappeared because of that same mentality as well. Like, hey, we're going to go get this land because we trust God's going to give us that land. And they only have like 5% of the money for the land. Okay? It's not smart. God wants you to be a, a good steward. There has to be thought and intention. Um, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. All right? It says, Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before you and make up beforehand your bounty. So take that which you've already gathered, whereof ye had noticed there. Ah, sorry. Wherefore, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. Not just oh, we gave this because we saw other people give this. I mentioned before. Does anybody remember in the previous chapter how long have they been gathering or planning this collection? What? A year. A year. All right, it's planned. There was intention. Hey, we're going to give to this cause and we're going to take this long to do it. It wasn't just something they just compiled right then. All right. Numero cinco. All right. Giving is to be proportionate. Okay, as the Lord has prospered him. We see that in verse two of our text. Let me get your points out here as well. All right. Each person was to give according to what he or she possessed. Okay. As God hath prospered him, suggests that the believer who had more could give more. All right? By no means am I going to say that, oh, because you have more, then, you, then you, are, you are commanded to do so. No, that is between you and the Lord. But as God has prospered you, you can give proportionally to that. However, Paul does not give a, spe a specific percentage to that. Now, by no means do I say, well, if you're following 
the method from the Old Testament of 10%, like the tithe and so forth, which technically if you're to add up a couple of the other things that they were giving up as well is actually closer to 23%. But anyway, but that's not a bad place to start. And if that's a method you choose to use, that, that's between you and the Lord. All right, but it is to be proportionate unto what you've been blessed. Uh, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, all right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, it says, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. So the word power there means uh, means or resource. Okay, so think of that again. For to their means, or by their means, I bear record, yea, and beyond their means they were willing of themselves. So they gave by their means, means being what they've received or what they've been prospered, and they were even willing, their heart was such that they were even willing to give beyond their means. They had a good heart in giving. Being a good steward will enable you to give more and bless others. Okay, this is why it's good to give proportionally. This is why it's good not to give impulsively and so forth. All right. How many of you guys have ever heard of a guy named Dave Ramsey? Okay. All right, put your hands down. He has a lot of good stuff. Uh, some stuff, you, I'm not saying you have to agree with everything he says, and I'm not, what I'm actually... What I'm actually going to bring up has nothing to do with any of his methods or plans or cut up all the cards or anything like that. But he does have a lot of good stuff. And, he, and by all accounts, he seems like he's a, he's a good Christian man. He, he uses a lot of scriptural basis for some of his things and, and so forth. But beyond that, I don't know him personally. But he does have a couple of good sayings, one of which is, his most popular one is, if you live like no one else, you can live like no one else. So what he's talking about is if you are willing to you know, cut back, you know, especially if you're in debt, you, if you live like no one else, live by the bare means, you're going to be able to in the future live in, in more because you've paid off your debt and so forth. So if you live like no one else, you can live like no one else. But he follows that up with, because he's very Christian minded in some of these things, and you can give like no one else. Okay, because he also understands that our time here on earth is limited. All right, this world is not my home. I'm just a pastor. We're going to talk about that at the end of the lesson. But what he's saying is, you shouldn't be hoarding it, but in order for you to give like no one else, to give to people in need and to help out in certain ministries and so forth, you have to be a good steward today. You have to be a good steward with the money you have. I kind of mentioned this on Sunday, especially for you guys that have started your you know, jobs and so forth. That's awesome. But be wary. Don't let your mentality right now, now's a good time to establish these habits. Don't let your mentality be, oh, yes, I can't wait to get this and I can't wait to get that. Because that's a very easy, that's a very natural mindset to have but understand that's a very natural mindset that can quickly grow in and evolve into a very bad habit okay and then you're not instead of being able to help anybody else you're the one that is consistently going to need help from others okay um so one of the things he talks about and you guys know uh, might have heard this as well is that's why it's a good thing to budget all right to set across. So me and Miss Christine budget our finances. The first thing we budget is our giving. Okay, what we're giving to the Lord, the first fruits of our labor and so forth. That is like our non-negotiable. We're going to give unto the Lord. And then we have these other things. And as God has blessed us, okay, if we have, we will give unto other things as well. And you guys, not from us, but some of you guys personally have experiences from other people in the church, especially when it came to camp, who have given to help some of you and some other people who might not have been able to afford to go to camp to go to camp. All right. That wasn't they weren't like, all right, uh, I'll give unto Joe's camp fee and I'm just going to take that out of my tithe or my giving this month. No, they weren't like that. No, they gave what they usually give. And they're like, you know what? We can help out so and so go to camp. Oh, we can help so and so with their car problems. Oh, hey, you know what? I heard so and so has a she's not in the room right now. So I'll, I'll brag on her, my wife a little bit. All right. She has a very close friend. And they're sending her daughter to school for the first time. And just in some, in, in some dire means right now. And Christine's like, hey, what can I help out with, with your daughter's uh, school? And she's like, well, she needs supplies. And Christine took her supply list, bought all her supplies. I was a little scared she was going to go a little overboard because she saw all these cute girl things and stuff. A lot of fairy stuff, okay? She's a kindergarten. And uh, so she got all these kindergarten, you know, all these supplies and so forth. And we're able to, she's able to do that because we're trying to be a good steward. We're not always perfect at it, and you're going to struggle as well. But if you're a good steward, it will enable you to give more. And I'm not just talking just to the church, but to give more and to be a blessing unto others than if you're not being a good steward. 
And guys, and we're going to come out to this. Let's just go to our next point here. Giving is plentiful. That should be your goal as a Christian. I'm not saying your goal is to give all your money into the church. No. Your goal as a Christian is to grow in a giving spirit or have a giving heart. Okay? You can give your regular giving unto the church, but it's a blessing, guys. And I hope you can experience that, hey, you know what? There's so-and-so that needs some help or I have a relative that needs some help. Or, and praying's good and that's awesome. But it's also good to also put some, something to it. All right, hey, so-and-so needs some help with their school bills. Or so-and-so needs some help with this and that. And as God has blessed you, and because you've been a good steward of what God has blessed you with, you're able to give unto that. You guys follow? But that all starts with the habits you build today. All right? And unfortunately, there's people that struggle with this. But it's not too late to start the habit either. Okay? But it's just better, obviously, if you start it today. Here's your points for being plentiful. Um... Grow in the grace of giving. Uh, we get this from verse 2 again where it says, there hath no, That there be no gatherings when I come. So Paul said, referring to this collection, gather every first day of the week, that there be no gatherings when I come. Not saying he wants gatherings to cease, but that you guys have given all that you needed to give. So when I come, all I have to do is make sure it's taken away. Okay? Um, if you're still in 2 Corinthians, look at verse eight, uh, chapter 8. We're going to look at verse 7 and 8. All right. Verse 7 says, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. So here's what he's talking about. Verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, so as you're growing in Christ and you grow in these certain, uh, whether they be graces or gifts, however you want to look at them, uh, in faith and utterance, so speech and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, See that ye, also, that ye abound in this grace also. Talking about the grace of giving or the gift of giving. Just as you want to grow in these certain aspects as a Christian, you want to grow in a giving heart as well. Verse 8, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Paul encourages the church to abound in the, giving, the grace of giving. Growth in the Christian life will result in a mature giving heart. As you grow in the Lord, it should help you grow in your heart to give to the Lord and to others as well. A heart dedicated to Christ cannot help but be generous towards God and his people. So, everyone look up here. This at times will lead to, yes, to more than 10%. Okay? And I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying that's more than 10% solely to the church, but if that's the case, that's awesome. If the Lord has blessed you and such, like say if there's a missionary need. And when you guys in the future... If, you, if, you, if you're still at our church or you go to a church like ours, uh, you can specifically designate uh, sometimes like, hey, I really want this to go to a specific missionary or for this specific cost. And a uh, pastor brings up sometimes as well from missionary letters like, hey, this missionary uh, letter says that this missionary has this certain need. If the Lord lays it on your heart to give unto that and has blessed you in that way, sometimes that's going to mean you give more to 10% and that is fine. That's good. Now, Something I want to bring of note, okay? What, were, what did we just got done, done talking about for like the last five weeks, I think, on chapter 15? What was the main subject, Ethan? Resurrection. Resurrection. So it's interesting to note that Paul mentioned this offering, this collection, after his discussion of resurrection. All right, because what has to happen first before resurrection? Death, okay? And he's pretty much bringing up, remember he talked about eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. Like, hey, if there was no resurrection, just live it up however you want now. But he's kind of debunked that. And what is kind of being understood is that you're not taking it with you. Okay? You're not taking it with you in the grave, and you're definitely not taking it with you when you get your resurrected body. So instead of hoarding or simply spending all on yourself, okay, think of how can I give unto the Lord and how can I, give, how can I be a blessing unto others. Still being a good steward, Okay, still giving in proportion, all right, wise, intentional in that, but understanding, am I more focused on just gathering unto myself, or am I also, or am I more concerned with investing in the eternal, all right, and that's the idea there. Are you, it, when it comes to your finances, you don't want to be solely just focused on spending, you want to be focused on investing, and I'm not talking about like stocks and stuff like that, if you get into that, you know, more power to you, all right, but investing in the work of the Lord, in the kingdom work, in the ministry, and in blessing others. You guys follow? 
If you're simply just spending on yourself, you're not being a good steward of God's given you.